All right, Buena Seda, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich. Fresh off the streets of Queens, you already know how we do. If you ain't about your business, then I don't know what you about, brother. You know what I'm saying? Salute to everybody. Good evening. You know how we do. Mob stories. You know the team. Don't got much time. Want to get this article out. <clears throat> I'm going to sit by and uh, I'm going to actually sit down and think about a schedule because I need to schedule myself, especially when it comes to these stories. But, uh... Let's get down to business, throw some smoke in the atmosphere, wipe your feet on the rug, gentlemen. You already know the rules. The rules of engagement, as they say. White Tahoe cookies mixed with a little bit of live resin. Red velvet resin with white Tahoe cookies. That's what I'm blowing in the atmosphere tonight. Of course, Scott Bernstein, salute to you. And everybody go check out thegangsterreport.com, all right? Let's get down to business. Mafia movie magic. First Jimmy Hoffa film in the 90s had mob links. Reputed Gambino crime family soldier Joe Iscro, a powerful player in the musician business for years dating back to the 1970s, gave Jimmy Hoffa the Hollywood treatment long before Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Netflix got into the game. The 72-year-old Isigro produced the 1992 film Hoffa, starring Jack Nicholson, and despite his riveting portrayal of the slain Teamsters boss, got lukewarm reviews and lost money at the box office. Isigro is allegedly the Gambino's representative on the West Coast. He did three years in prison for running a loan sharking racket out of his Beverly Hills office giving out juice loans, charging 5% a week to a clientele made up of mostly people in the entertainment industry. In 1990, he was indicted for racketeering and money laundering tied to a payola conspiracy that was eventually tossed for prosecutorial misconduct. And in 2014, Isgro was arrested for bookmaking out of New York. Scorsese's The Irishman debuts in theaters this month to widespread critical acclaim and will land on Netflix on November 27th. The film chronicles the friendship between Hoffa, played by Al Pacino, and Frank the Irishman Sheeran, a Teamsters executive and mob hitman who dubiously claimed to have killed Hoffa and is portrayed by De Niro. Sheeran confessed to being the trigger man in the notoriously never solved gangman hit right before he died of natural causes in 2003. Hoffa's body was never found. The book in which the confession went public in I Heard You Paint Houses, was authored by Sheeran's attorney, Charlie Brandt, and acted as the sole material for the movie script. The FBI and most experts on the Hoffa murder investigation dismissed Sheeran's claim and instead point to either members of the Detroit Mafia or the New Jersey wing of the New York's Genovese crime family as the haters. Hoffa, the most powerful labor union leader in the history of America, disappeared on the afternoon of July 30, 1975, from a suburban Detroit restaurant parking lot on his way to meet Detroit Mob Street boss Anthony Tony Jack Giacolone and Genovese Capo Anthony Tony Pro Provenzano for a sit-down to settle beef between him and Tony Pro. The one-time allies were in a bitter feud and Hoffa needed Provenzano's support in his attempt to reclaim the Teamsters' presidency after relinquishing the post five years earlier in order to get out of prison via a sentence communication from the Nixon White House. Nobody has ever been arrested in the case in FBI. Nobody has ever been arrested in the case in the FBI and Michigan State Police are still actively pursuing the investigation. Iskra was the first person intent on telling the Hoffa story on the big screen, using a script penned by legendary screenwriter David Mamet, directed by and co-star Danny DeVito. The $35 million budgeted project was produced and distributed by 20th Century Fox Pictures. Born in Philadelphia, Iskra served in the Vietnam War as a U.S. Marine and came home with a Purple Heart. He jumped in the world of recording promotion and found success promoting such chart-topping superstars like Michael Jackson, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Diana Ross, U2, Elton John, Billy Joel, David Bowie, Bruce Springsteen, Lionel Richie, The Who, The Rolling Stones, and many more successful rock and pop rock acts. 
Before going out on his own in 1979, his scroll was the head of promotions at Motown Records, Roulette Records, and EMI. Roulette Records was owned by New York mob associate Morris Levy, who was closely tied to the Genovese family. Motown founder Barry Gordy allegedly received a portion of the startup financing for his iconic label from a small street loan provided by the Detroit Mafia, according to FBI informants in the 1960s. Scott Bernstein, great article. Go check out thegangsterreport.com. Irishman, November 27th. I will definitely be watching it. We will definitely be critiquing it. And of course, we'll be talking about the articles and stories of people that say the book is the sham, the movie's based on a lie. And even if the movie is based on a lie, do we not want to see De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Al Pacino in a movie together directed by Martin Scorsese, the Don himself? Throw your fucking smoke in the air. Salute. Make sure you like the video. Share the video. Everybody have a good evening. It's Big Rich Ruckus Radio. You know how we do. Salute.